This video is about the CN5711, an easy-to-use LED driver IC that's available for less than 20 cents from lcsc.com, and there's also a module available from Amazon. I didn't see too much information about this device on YouTube, so I decided to make this video. Let's find out exactly what it does and when it might be useful. Here's the test setup. The module with the driver IC is at the bottom in the middle, and it's connected to the LED on the left that's shining down onto the board. It's one of these star LEDs that has an aluminum heatsink attached to it. I'll show a better picture of it later. Up at the top, there's a microcontroller connected to an INA219 measurement IC. That allows us to measure the, the voltage going to, to the CN5711 and also the current that's flowing through it. Here's a closer look at the module. You can see that it's pretty small. It's compared here to a US penny. The, um, the chip itself is an SOIC8 package, so it's small enough to hand solder. And there's a little trim pot on the upper left that we'll talk about later. Here's the underside of the module. You can see there's a big pad with some vias into it. And the vias connect to a smaller pad on the top side of the board. And the uh, IC is supposed to be soldered to that. You, you know, there's a sort of pad on the bottom of the IC package that you're supposed to solder for, for uh, heat sink purposes. That might be a challenge for hand soldering. Here's the LED that we'll use for testing. I bought this from Amazon and don't have a data sheet for it, but I think it's it can be driven with, oh, 200 to 300 milliamps. And when driven with 100 milliamps, it's about as bright as a ordinary flashlight, so not, not super bright. The uh, green wire uh, connects directly to the LED. The black wire would be ground, so if you connect green and black, you'd be connecting directly across the LED. The red wire connects through a 6.8 ohm current lim limiting resistor, and uh, we can use that to measure the current that's going across the LED, as we'll see later. Here's a diagram from the CN5711's data sheet that shows how to use it. It's really quite simple. First, you have to connect a supply voltage to VCC. The supply voltage has to be between 2.8 and 6 volts and also has to be greater than the LED's forward voltage with a little bit of margin for a voltage drop. And, uh, and then the CN5711's job is to produce a constant current on the LED outputs that drives a load. And you set that current by selecting the value of a, re of a resistor RI set. The maximum current that it can produce is 1.5 amps according to the data sheet, but I've only tested to 300 milliamps. As an example of how to set the resistor, suppose you want to drive your LED with 100 milliamps. Well, then you would pick an 18K resistor because 1800 divided by 18K would give you a 100 milliamps. There's also a chip enable input. And if you want the LED to be constantly on, you can just tie that to VCC. But you can also connect it to a PWM signal. And then the duty cycle of that signal can control the brightness of the LED. The PWM frequency is supposed to be less than 2 kilohertz, but I think it's better to use less than 200 hertz. And I'll demonstrate that later. Here's the complete test setup. We can see the uh, LED attached, and notice that we are connecting the 6.8 ohm resistor in series. And that's not necessary to operate the LED because the CN5711 will, will limit the current. But we can use that 6.8 ohm resistor to measure the current going through the, uh, through the LED. And in addition, we have the INA219 that I mentioned before that measures the current supplied to the entire CN5711. There's a push button switch that we can use to short the 6.8 ohm resistor. And when we do that, obviously we can't measure the current anymore, but we can see how the CN5711 lowers the voltage to maintain the current because it no longer has to take care of the, or cover the voltage drop across the resistor. And uh, also notice that the module has a potentiometer in series with a 1K resistor for, for setting the current of the CN5711. So we can change that potentiometer on the fly and watch the amount of current being supplied to the LED uh, change as we turn the potentiometer. We'll use the ADA-LM2000, otherwise known as M2K, to make measurements and, and also to drive the chip enable input of the CN5711 with the PWN si signal. So the uh, differential input pair 1 plus and 1 minus will measure the voltage drop across the combination of the 6.8 ohm resistor and the LED. And 2 plus and 2 mi minus will just measure the voltage drop across the 6.8 ohm resistor. So if we take that voltage difference and divide it by 6.8, that will tell us the current. 
I made an introductory video about the M2K. You can see that for more information about this device. At this point, we can run the M2K Scopy application and do three things. We can see how the potentiometer sets the LED's current, and we can see how long the CN5711 can maintain a constant current as we lower the supply voltage from 6 volts down to lower values. And we can see how the PWM signal can blink and dim the LED. So we're running, and there's quite a bit on the screen. First of all, on the upper right, we have the output of the INA 219. And so that's printing every few seconds, and it's showing the supply voltage going into the CN5711. So right now, 5.98 volts, actually. And uh, it also shows the current going through the entire uh, CN5711. And that's currently 97.64 uh, milliamps. And then here in the Scopy window, we have uh, several channels. So channel one, the orange, is the voltage drop from the LED output of the 5711 to ground. So that's the voltage drop across the combination of the 6.8 ohm resistor and the LED. And then channel one, the purple, is just the voltage drop across the 6.8 ohm uh, resistor and that's what allows us to measure current and so basically the current is 6.78 uh, millivolts currently divided by 6.8 ohms the value of the resistor and so this third channel is a math channel the green green channel is a math channel that's doing that division for us and so that's reading 100.58 and it's showing millivolts but that's actually milliamps and so what that means is that the current the current flowing from the LED output of the 5711 to ground is 100.5 milliamps at this time. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that these current measurements are probably not super accurate. I, I wouldn't assume that they're any better than 5 or even 10 percent, but they're good enough for our purposes. So um, anyway, now that we have all of this measurement set up in place, we can experiment with the 5711 as as much as we like. And so one of the obvious things to do is to change the value of RI set and thus change the constant current that the 5711 is, is to being asked to produce. And I do that by just adjusting this trim pot right, right on the 5711 module. And so if I turn it down, we can see that the uh, current is uh, dropping. It's dropped to 54.5 milliamps now. And and can go further down. And you also probably see that the uh, LED looks subjectively dimmer. And um, so I can do that quicker. Maybe you can see the LED change brightness as well. So I can go from, you know, 50 millivolts here, and then I can increase the current um, up, 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 you know, up to around 300 milliamps, which is as much as I want to do with this particular LED. You can also see the oscilloscope traces going up and down too. So here we are back around uh, 112 milliamps. So essentially the, uh, the potentiometer is controlling RI set and that's allowing, allowing us to choose the constant current value that the CN57 is being asked to produce. And that's being done with that supply voltage of six, six volts. So one thing I have on, on the test setup here is a push button right, right here. And if I push that, it shorts the 6.8 ohm LED, which means that the current measurement in green would no longer be valid. But, but it means that the, uh, the CN5711 no longer has to produce an output voltage, show, shown in orange, that, that includes the voltage drop of the resistor, which is what's shown in purple. So if I press that button and short the resistor, we'd, we'd expect the uh, orange to go from 3.6 volts down to approximately, I don't know, 2.9 or 3 volts to, uh, you know, because the uh, resistor is shorted and no longer has its voltage drop needed. So if I press that button, we see that immediately the CN5711's output voltage at the LED output um, drops to 2.9, and that maintains the same current um, across the uh, the LED, although we can't see that in measurement. You can probably see as I press the button and release it that the subjective brightness does not change. And you'll also notice that the total um, current and, and also power in milliwatts going into the uh, 
5711 does not change. You see that over in this window from the INET 219. So pressing this button like this and releasing it is kind of showing the key feature of the CN5711, and that's that it maintains its constant current output re regardless of the characteristics of the load. The next interesting thing we can do is to change the supply voltage going into the CN5711 and see how low we can reduce that voltage and still maintain the same output current. Um, and so I'll do that by adjusting the supply voltage using my power supply that's that's you know currently set to six volts going to the 5711. And now if, as I reduce that, you'll see the number here in this window go down. So now we're at, oh, it updates every few seconds. Now we're at about five volts instead of six. And we can still, we can see the current is still 112 millivolts. So let's just keep going down until we see that 112 start to reduce, which is happening right about now. And if we go over here, um, we can see that the voltage of 4.07 is sufficient to maintain that voltage drop of 3.65 and the current of about 112. If I continue to reduce the supply voltage, actually I'm getting a little further, and uh, so now it's really dropping. And and so so now just 3.5 volts of supply voltage is, is uh, allowing a 3.47 voltage drop from LED to ground, and, and the the output current of the 5711 has reduced somewhat. So now I'm really at the at the limit because the output current's already reduced. So the necessary headroom of the supply voltage for the CN5711 above the needed voltage to maintain the current, that, that headroom isn't that large. So that's actually a pretty good feature of the CN5711. If I continue to drop the supply voltage a lot more, you can see that the LED dims and uh, the voltage drop in orange is now quite low and the current driving the LED is nowhere near 112 anymore. So I've gone below the, uh, the voltage needed to drive the LED at the current that I had suggested. The next thing we can do is play with the the uh, chip enable input of the 5711. So far, it's been set to produce a continuous 5 volts to keep the uh, the uh, CN57 driving current all the time. But another way to dim the LED is to adjust the duty cycle of the of the PWM signal going into the into the chip into the chip uh, enable. And so, if I go here to the uh, scopey control for that, I can change the duty cycle, say, from its current 100% to, let's say, 10%, and we should see the LED get quite a bit dimmer. And if we go back to the oscilloscope, um, you can now see that, that the current isn't being supplied all the time. It's pulsing on and off with the, that 90% duty cycle. And so that makes the uh, LED dimmer and also reduces the average power. So now it's down to about 14.8 milliamps in terms of an average. So that's also a very common and good way to control the brightness of an LED. And the CN5711 allows that by, by means of that chip enable input. The data sheet says that the frequency of, of the PWM signal should be no, no more than 2000. But if you notice, it's not a perfectly nice uh, signal. It doesn't roll off. All, all that well. And so I've this is currently set at about 180 hertz, and that seems to be a good frequency, much better than something higher when you're using the CN5711. So just for fun, we, we could uh, drop, let's go back to a, say, a 50% duty cycle. So the LED should brighten. And uh, let's reduce the frequency to, say, 2 hertz. And then you should see the LED blink <laughs> as the chip enable is, is turning it on and off. So then I'll go back to 180 and go back to the full 100% duty cycle and go back to the oscilloscope. And now we're just back to where we were with the 112 milliamp output. 
A good question. How efficient is the CN5711? It is not a buck or a boost converter with a controller that pays attention to current to keep it constant. Its efficiency is going to depend on the difference between its supply voltage and the voltage drop needed to supply the current that's, that's requested. And in that sense, it's, it's more like a traditional circuit where, you, where you've rigged a transistor to act as a current source. And so if you look, I've, I've now have, have the uh, supply voltage to the CA5711 set at a voltage that just barely maintains my, my 112 milliamps. And, um, and the, uh, C, the INA219 is actually measuring the, well, let's just go with the total power. So 426 milliwatts at, at this time. And in this configuration, um, also given that my measurements aren't super accurate, um, I, I think that the CN57 is pretty is pretty efficient because its supply voltage is just barely above what's needed to um, drive the LED. But now, if if I increase the voltage back up to six, look at what happens to the total power. It's going to go up, and uh, as we head towards six volts again. Okay, 6.22, I'll back off a little bit and that'll be close enough. And, um, and so now when the voltage supply to the CN5711 is much greater than the LED needed to be driven at 112 millivolts, plus the, remember that resistor is still in there too. Um, now the total power has gone up to 679 milliwatts. And so that difference is being dissipated as heat. And so when the supply voltage is much higher than needed, the CN5711 isn't very efficient at all. So you know, if you're worried about power efficiency, you probably want to um, make sure that the supply voltage isn't, isn't too high. Uh, above what's needed, and then do the LED dimming using using PWM. Just a reminder that in normal usage of the CN5711, you would not have a resistor in series with the with the LED. I had that 6.8 ohm resistor in series simply as a current measurement trick. The normal way to use it would be that that resistor wasn't there, which is equivalent to when my button's pressed. Um, so just wanted to make sure that was clear to everybody. In conclusion, is the CN5711 a good part to use, or should you just use a current limiting resistor, or perhaps build a simple transistor-based constant current source? Well, I think the CN5711 does have some advantages. First of all, it is very easy and convenient to use. You just choose your RI set resistor and you'll get the current that you wanted. No, no more fuss. And also, it, it operates with a pretty low voltage overhead. It's a pretty low dropout device. And so you might have trouble matching that in a simple transistor circuit. And it also provides quite good uh, volt voltage compliance. So it maintains the current that you, that you need and set via RI set across quite a wide range of input supply voltages. And finally, its data sheet claims uh, overhead protection. So if you somehow get into a situation where you're drawing more current than you should, the CN5711 shouldn't just burn up. And instead, its data sheet claims that it'll, it'll just reduce the output current to a level that's sustainable without, without fire or smoke ensuing. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't, I don't think too many people would use this part in practice, but I made the video because there was very little information about the CN5711 on, on YouTube and modules are available. So if you were one of the people that's looking into it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.